make it in today. So we got um, Jer on filler. Good to be here. Good to be here. Thanks for having me. Subbing in. Subbing in last minute. You know what I mean? Uh, we got a lot of exciting things to talk about today. Um, and by exciting, I mean we're going to stop talking about war. <laughs> because in politics... It's, it's not fun. It's just not fun. I don't want to hear it. I don't like, want to talk about it. You don't want to hear it and talk about it. I don't want to it. hear it. I don't want to talk about it. And last episode, that like we talked about the whole, like you know, the whole Hamas, Islam versus Jew, the Jews, the Jews and Islam, and it's just it's been happening for fucking centuries. All right, just, just let's just get fucking over it. You know, let's just get over it and start a bunch of OnlyFans accounts. <laughs> That's just how it is. Get that only dads going. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I get that only dads. So I will say though, the only thing that we'll talk about politics and then be over with it is I want to rewatch the Trump video where he calls the fucking um, where he calls this unbelievably the, the corrupt DC Biden shitty. Department of Justice recently invited an Iranian-backed judge from Iraq to visit our nation's capital. Isn't that nice? This is one of the best videos been ever, too dude. Impressed with our capital. It looks like shit. <laughs> Shit. He hit him with the fucking, uh, he hit him with the Tourette's guy. Yeah. It looks like, like shit. shit. He just, uh, he, Trump, I think Trump's relatable because it's like we all have an uncle like Trump. You know? Orange and he gets to the point. Orange and straight to the point. You know, something like the man's diet is off somewhere, but, you know, at least he's straightforward. <laughs> too much beta carotene. He eats too many carrots. That's a real thing. Mm -hmm. People turn orange. Yeah. People if you have too much beta orange. carotene, yeah. Vitamin A. Have you seen have you seen the uh, there's a guy who's purple? Yeah. From eating it's like uh, silver. Yeah, yeah. He's been drinking uh ox or silver. Can you look uh, that up? It's, um it's oxidized silver. Oxidized not, silver. Not oxidized, but it's um activated uh, silver. It's a uh, I can't remember exactly what it is. It's that bullshit health thing. My grandparents used to be all about it. Col col um, colloidal silver. Man drinks colloidal silver. He ends up turning purple because he drinks so much a day that he ends up getting poisoning. Dude, this guy literally looks like a fucking Smurf. Dude. Oh he looks like God. Papa Smurf. Yeah. This man ate Willy Wonka's fucking blueberry gum. Oh, yeah, dude. Yeah. Yeah, that, that one bitch who fucking yeah. blew up. Violet. And got, yeah, and got like obese. Now, now people be doing that on purpose. Damn, damn, dude. He just never stopped. That is not. His. Yeah. See, even after he learned why he was turning purple, he was like, "Yeah." He's like, "It's good for my health." Yeah, literally. That's, that was exactly what he said. He was like, "Yeah, I beat cancer with it. Who cares if I'm purple?" Yeah. He's like, "It's like I'm already turned blue from silver. What am I gonna do? Not be blue?" So, what did we learn from this, kids? We learned that blackface is okay. As long as it naturally happens from colloidal silver. <laughs> it is the only time it is a... Oh, my God, dude. Look at his, yeah. his eyes are fucking... That is yeah, nuts. dude. That's like straight up like silver poisoning. Yeah. That, I can't remember exactly like why it turned blue. I think like the silver was oxidizing. And when silver oxidizes, I think it gets like out, something like that. Um... I can't remember exactly what it was. Yeah, it's a wild reaction, essentially. Imagine going to a homie's house. He's like, here's my uncle. <laughs> well, dude, Some what fucking the fuck? Papa Smurf walks out. Bro, I'd be... I'd be like, all right, this family's too much for me, I'd be bro. roasting the fuck out of my friend if I saw that. Yeah, it's I time... I came over for the family reunion and this fucker walks it's out. It's time to leave. Bro, I'm making so many jokes. Your friend you, you, your friend would go to lunch and be like, oh, do you got, you got some silver in there? You, you did your uncle pack his silver so you could turn fucking black? You got your silver and blueberry pie ready? Mm -hmm. He had the opposite Jesus. of what Michael Jackson had. You know, he's got that. He's got that uncle ruckus build. Yeah. <laughs> I ain't black. <laughs> I've got my silver reverse Vita Lego. <laughs> I have been conditioned in this world, <laughs> dude. What a, what a. What a great character, honestly. They should bring him back. They tried, actually. They, uh, the thing, like, literally a year or two ago, they tried to bring in Boondocks back, and it, like, got canceled immediately. Yeah. 
I mean, not shocked at this point. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. Um, I'm actually, I think they actually did go back and they canceled one episode of the Boondocks. Actually, I'm pretty sure too. There was a modern Boondocks that came out. They Is tried. Really? Yeah, they tried. Did it come and, out? No, Can you look no. it up? I know they went back though, and I think they did cancel one of the old episodes though. Like how like cancel culture is really going back to old shows and like being like, I don't like that, and canceling like that one episode like they did with South Park. I think one of them did get hit by the boondocks. One, one episode? out of all of them, yeah. One episode, dude. Fucking go back to boondocks and like dude, see all oh, the. Wild I love shit. the boondocks. I mean, my okay, back in back when I was like sixteen to eighteen, when I was working my first job at McDonald's, I would work in fry cook. And yeah. uh, my best friend of that job was named Deshaun, one of the few actual like black kids out there that too. Bro, me and him would just fucking quote Boondocks and that girl all day. It's fucking so stink great. meaner. We'd be bad there, like yeah. yeah, it'd be real bad. Somebody <laughs> sometimes somebody would hear me and like especially if it wasn't around, like if they didn't see him or something, they'd be like whoa, and like he'd be around the corner, be like yo, it's okay. <laughs> You're like yo, we 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 messing around. It's like yeah, I'm I just, gave him a pass. I'm just thinking about all of the. I'm just thinking about all, all the, the quotes, dude. Yeah, yeah, that that was us in the back. Yeah, I didn't say nothing wrong. I saw gay and I said gay. <laughs> I love the. I love how I love when Riley uh, ended up. What was it when he uh, can? Not, uh, I can't remember the exact word for it. Not a. Uh, Gaslight. He basically gaslit his t- white teacher into saying the N-word. Oh, yeah, yeah. And he gets in yeah. trouble for it. He's like, yeah, he says it all the, the time. He was like, <laughs> he was like, he he called me the N-word. And his teacher's like, he says it for everything. Do you know? He's like, he says it so often, I don't even notice it. Do you know that that episode is based off of a true story? That's amazing. That's amazing. I'm not I kidding. Not- Look up most. I think most Boondocks episodes yeah. are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look up the uh, video on YouTube of a uh, white teacher says N word, and it's literally like this guy gets in trouble for saying the N word, and then this news station comes to like go like interview him. Oh yeah, yeah, God. yeah. It's right up there. He is. Yeah, no, the first one. There you go, bro. I. They are on top of it. <laughs> They're better than South Park when it comes to that. I don't know. South God. Park is pretty. Have you seen the kid that was like, I like doing crime for fun. Why'd you steal that car? Because it's fun. It's fun to do bad things. Yeah. Have you seen that? Yeah, That's yeah. a real kid too. A real kid. It's like, it's like exactly like he does in the video. <laughs> what does that have to do with... Bro, okay. This is like the most American kid ever. Yeah. Football, ROTC... Jay. Yeah, yeah, listen, listen. And I just kind of was stunned a second. Well, 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 then get away from the door, nigga. <laughs> I repeated the same insult because Bro, that's so... what I've been trained to do. The school district says that is not what they <laughs> That is exactly what they use in Moondocks, too. That is word for word what they say. Yeah, all right, pause it. I love that. Yeah, dude. Okay. If you see the the next bump, it'll show when he actually explains why he said it. Yeah. So go. Yes. Yeah, sh- you'll see. Yeah. Right there. The you most. Re- the, bump? the most replayed. The we see the little gray like A little bump right that there. That huge yeah, yeah, bump. Yeah. And I'm trying to understand it. I need help. Yes, I. I- <laughs> <laughs> No, he brought the visuals. He brought the visual <laughs> cue. He's like, this one's bad. This wait, wait, one wait. should be okay. <laughs> He's like completely different words. <laughs> Why does he say it's so good, dude? He literally pulls out the little description like hard R is bad, no R is okay. They're different words. No, the way he no, says buddy, it, dude, buddy. The way he <laughs> says it, you could tell this guy. This guy used to work in an inner city someplace. Definitely. That's why he feels comfortable, bro. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly, he's heard it so much. It's, <laughs> just, it's another, it's just a word to him. What a classic. Jesus Christ. I, do you know about uh, Fleece Johnson, the booty warrior? Mm-mm. You know the job, Fleece Johnson. You know what that reminds me of? It reminds me of that one, um, the one clip of Theo Vaughn. The booty Vaughn. warrior. The one look clip up, of... Uh, look up Boondocks. He's a real person. If you can, there's like an actual small clip of him talking too. He's like a straight up menace. But yeah, they did a. So that clip reminds me of that Theo Vaughn uh, like clip when he's on live. Just, uh, very first one. Yeah. And he's talk. He's talking with Drewski. Like Theo Vaughn's talking to Drewski. Before we watch this, you, you should pull that up. 
Uh, just uh, look up, uh, pull up another page here. I go, uh, Theo Von Drewski live. Yeah, first one. Oh, I, I did see this. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is the fucking. This is a reaction to the. It's whatever. We'll see it. I didn't hear it. Oh, yeah, you're right. I heard it. The gaslighting, dude. I didn't want to hear it, man. You didn't want to hear it. I didn't want to hear it. Yeah, you're right. You are really. Look, I thought he was sick. Your boy just got on. I didn't hear it. <laughs> How the fuck you ain't here, bitch? You was on here coming. Oh yeah, you're right. Yeah, just uh, look, up, look up um, uh, Theo Von. Uh, I just How write the hell it down. You hear it the first time. Jesus Christ! I didn't want to hear it, man. I'm, Wait, no, it's the second video. That shit. It's the second video. Yeah. Look, I thought he was mixed, man. I think what, he might have been black. He had all those black lights. A lot of people look white under the black light. You're right. You're right. You know, we're not black. I, I, I would give Theo Von the, the fucking man. pass, but I'm not, so I can't give that to him. But oh, I don't think that shit's funny at all. What I do is, if I really need to get it out, I write it down. I write it down. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember seeing that. Yeah, and then he like he kicks him out of the live, dude. It's fucking perfect. <laughs> It's fucking perfect. All right, that's enough. We we go. If I ever want to say it, I just write it down. Yeah, I, that's an actual therapy technique, by the way. Really? If you're ever angry at somebody or something, like I literally learned that like anger, anger management. When I was in like elementary school. If you're angry, you literally like write down how you feel about someone, and then you throw it away. It's literally like you writing how you feel, and then just getting rid of the feelings. So it's like, I want to beat the shit out of my wife. I hate her and everything that she resembles. Throw it away. And you didn't beat your wife. Yeah, See, you therapy. Didn't beat your, I, no, he still went home yeah. and beat his wife. <laughs> See, I remember. He I got, still went home. See, I got in trouble when I did it. I got, I, see, I did exactly as my therapist said. She said, write down exactly how you like oh, how someone no. makes you feel in elementary school. So I did. So for some reason, the I think I didn't crumble it up or something. So the teacher found it and I got in trouble because I, I don't know how. I think I don't know if I signed it what. But like, I just remember right. She I, knew. But she saw that handwriting. Oh, yeah, basically. Like, That's I, I, was, I, I remember, I remember it was like, I think this kid named George pissed me off or something. I just remember writing like, George is a stupid bitch. And it's yeah, like, I'm in like third George. grade, fourth grade. And my teacher was like, what is this? And I was like, my teacher, I was like, my therapist said to like, write down how I feel. <laughs> This is how I feel. He's a stupid bitch. I'm angry. And it's, she's like, you don't say that. I'm like, I didn't. That's why I wrote it down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's how kids work, too. I'm like, I did that's exactly how, what I was told to do. Yeah, I'm just saying. Like, what? Just I'm, like, I'm sorry. He was being a stupid bitch. I never told him to write that. Yes, you did. You just you just don't imagine that he has that kind of vocabulary in his brain. I was, I was cussing like a sailor way too young. Right. <laughs> All right. Let, let's, let's show this. Can I hit that? Yes, sir. That blinky? That legal blinky. Yeah, so Felice Johnson's a real guy. This is the parody Boondocks did. There's some juice on the table. It's for Chris Hansen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is one of my favorites. I came looking for booty. I came looking for booty. Looking for sex. Oh, no, I ain't come looking for no little boy. I ain't got no milk, no cookies. For my man's booty. A man's butt? Excuse me? Oh, I know who you are. Chris Hansen. I call you Chris Handsome. So you go ahead and bring them cameras and them posts. It don't make no difference. It don't make no difference. Now, you doing what? I like you, and I want you. We can, we can do this the easy way. We can do this the hard way. The choice is yours, Mr. Hanson. Well, I don't think you and I will be doing it in any kind of way. Okay, I, I see you chose the hard way. Oh, okay. Come on, get this guy. Oh, no. Chris, I'm a warrior. I'm a warrior. But no, he actually did say that. Fleece Johnson was a real prisoner, and he was known as the booty warrior. That that is real. Yeah, no. Um, I, 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 it might be easier if I look it up. Like literally, like dude, look up FBI Fleece Johnson be on prison. My ass, dude, with these search results. Fleece Johnson prison. Uh, the booty warrior. There's like a quick little video that kind of has like his main quote. Give me one second. 
See, I call you Chris Handsome. <laughs> I don't even know if we could fucking put this on the goddamn <laughs> on the goddamn podcast. We'll blur it out. Goddamn, dude. But when Lockup visited Kentucky State Penitentiary, we met Fleece Johnson. He's real, dude. <laughs> oh my god. It was like I said, dude. Boondocks is exact quotes. <laughs> oh my! I want you and I like you. Now we can do this the hard way, or we can do this the easy way. That's an actual quote. He says this in this interview. Was like <laughs> yeah. Any place you see fleas pop up, yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude. Wait, hold on. I I just love that he's in prison, obviously unbothered. People don't give him shit because he's just so confident about it. You know what I mean? Like most guys will be like, "Oh yeah, like maybe I did that, but it wasn't gay." And he's just like, "I'm here I for like the man. two things: booty and being inside of it." That's like. <laughs> Straight up getting like, named hey, the booty warrior. At least dude. Fleece knows exactly what he's about. Oh, yeah, you see a man like this coming at yeah. you in the prison showers, you know you're fucked. Oh god. Quite. If he's looking at you like that, <laughs> dude, like With a hungry his... fucking redder. He's just <laughs> You're I'll fucked, wait. dude. You're fucked. It was Yeah, this means all about it. Johnson went out to tell her. Yeah, yeah. Hey, you come here. I said, I'm tearing you up. Uh, now I like you. Now I want you. And uh, uh, we can do it the easy way or the hard way. So the choice is yours, right? Yeah, dude. And That's why I said the Boondocks is better than South Park is they use exact quotes. This guy just lost party, bro. <laughs> just like the fucking fat kid that stole his Alan's car or whatever, and he's just like, I like doing bad things. Doing bad things is fun. That was a real kid. The interview from the Boondocks is like scene for scene, exactly from the fucking interview. Yeah, Boondocks. I don't know how they can. Hold on, sorry. I barely got anything out of that. Is that dying? I hope it's not. No, I'm just a bitch. Uh, it's on low heat, too. We can turn that up if we want to get a little toastier, but this is good flavor. The low, hoats, low heat, yeah, it's good. It's good, it's good flavor. flavor, yes, sir. So we like the terpenes. <laughs> We've changed up our content, son. We went from fucking jihad to fucking booty, booty loving. <laughs> hey, man. Still warriors. You know what, though? Like, you got to give it to the man. He knows what he wants. He And he says it proud. You know, when women say men only want one thing, it's because they watch that video. I feel like that guy's on a whole nother level, too. Like, believe me, like, I've met... Bodie's more important yeah, than water. Than water. There was a one point. <laughs> Listen, I like you. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a... Yeah, you didn't know that was a real quote, did you? No, what happened was I knew that both of them existed, but I never put it together. Yeah. I like, never put it together. Like, half, this guy's putting together butt cheeks left Boondocks and Boondocks right. is on top of their shit. Um, the fight scene between, like, those three... Oh, and, uh... Uh, not Riley. Fucking Huey. When Huey's fucking going against those, like, three other people and that huge, like martial art thing it's that one lady and the other people yeah they stole a legit fighting scene from naruto the exact choreography her him fighting her was sasuke versus aruchimaru in the tuning exams which is perfect considering the swag that you're presenting today let it be known that we found this at a goodwill we found this in a goodwill <laughs> this cost me like eight bucks eight bucks the fire dude straight fire <laughs> Only we sold merch like this. You know, I, I'm think I'm thinking about Mr. What's his name? Booty the Fleece boot, Johnson. Fleece Johnson. Fleece Johnson. Don't forget it. What the booty warrior? The booty warrior. The booty warrior. I'm thinking about him, and you know, very few times do I believe that someone's better off in jail. 
but and but for like themselves, not like for society. Obviously, most people who are in jail probably deserve to be in jail. With the select few that got thrown See, in this there, this is one of those rare cases where it's better for like, society and, and the person. And the person, it's a win to be in jail. Yeah, because like imagine you're just at like a McDonald's, you know, you bend over the line, and all of a sudden you just hear, "I want you," I and I like you. I want you. Yeah. <laughs> what are you gonna do? <laughs> if somebody came up to me with that much confidence, bro, I feel like I would be like. I would try. I would work with it. I'd be like, I you know, I'd be like, I gotta get ready. Like you saying, I can't get ready. Like I just you know, I want to be pretty for you. Let me just powder. And then nose. you use that opportunity to get the fuck out of there. You know what I mean? You gotta convince them because there ain't no man that comes up to you with that much confidence, like that they're going to like you know let it through. Now you're basing it off of like you know, can I fight my way out of this or not? You know, but in prison you can't fucking get away. You know, it's either... Where are you going to go? Yeah, exactly. This guy was probably so happy the day he got in. The you can see it on his face. Yeah, dude. He walked in and he's like, "Ooh, it's a fucking buffet up in here. All these dudes just being like, I don't like the way this guy's fucking looking. I love... He's probably like the biggest bully in the whole jail, dude. Fucking tiny old Fleece Johnson over here being a fucking menace, yeah. dude. And you know what I... I bet you anything that this guy still acts straight as fuck. You know what I mean? On like day to day things, he's still acting straight as fuck. Oh you know? yeah, but yeah. like, but he just loves booty. And it, like that's like man's the one thing. Butt. Yeah, that's just a man's butt. And you could tell like he's he's one of those gays. It's like he's gay, but he's not. It's because you could tell that he's never bought him. Dude, the way that he chases after it, the way that he oh, thirsts yeah, after yeah. it, that's top activity. Oh, yeah. My no, guy. He's, he's a predator. He's you a, saw in his eyes. Dude. He, he was there for the down. hunt. He's down with it. <laughs> like, if there, is there, if, if like that person was willing to give it up, he, he wouldn't even want it. Like, I don't think he wants the easy Jesus way. Jesus Christ. Now, I love people listening in right now. I'm sure you're like, what the hell is going on? Well, look, all I'm saying is is that Boondocks was a great show. South Park is probably the next coming up. Actually, have you seen the... Uh, there's like a trailer for the new South Park coming out, and it's perfect. Aside from when you randomly show me an episode once in a while, I haven't seen Boondocks, so it's member berries. Member berries? That's the only thing you... That's when I stopped watching. That's when you stopped watching, yeah. Yeah, I stopped watching it's in like the middle of member one. berries. No it's, no, it's actually the f- first one. Yeah, it's the first one. So this... So this is about um, this is about like how Hollywood just like tries to diversify everything. They just turn they turn like any white motherfucker into a black motherfucker or some other motherfucker. You know, they have one kind of motherfucker and then they bring in another motherfucker and they're like, well, this this other motherfuckers, there's less of them here. So we're going to make them more in the i don't fucking understand but yeah they're making they're making fun of it let's see this i hope hope this is accurate because i actually don't know if you realize this but it's even worse than white people they're getting rid of the gingers oh god like you know i'm not even kidding we'll go we'll we'll look it up after this but if you look it's every ginger character they get rid of and turn black and gingers are like the legit minority of the world yeah they are they're the least and hollywood's just like let's just get rid of all of our ginger characters yeah but there is there is one group of people that is less than the gingers you know what group of people that is the samoans dudes who know where the clit is that is the most like rare group of people that you will ever find on this earth i saw this twitter post on this one chick really recently and i think it's the funniest thing ever because as stone that's part of that very select rare ultra uh, very rare group um yeah yeah they're like the same there are more billionaires than there are guys who know where the clit is okay this is a mystery that's been lost to time okay the question has been handed down from generation to generation but there's never been an answering or a calling see i love what this lady said because she was just like i don't believe that men generally don't know where it's at because you open it up and it's just sitting there like a uh, boss, uh, like a boss critical hit zone. <laughs> I was like, you know, when you put it like that, then it's a lot easier. Like, it's, it's, not, it's not true. It's right. Yeah. That's true. It's just, it's hiding in plain sight. And let me tell you, ladies, men, the, the one thing that we, you will have to deal with for the rest of your life, if you're straight at least. If you're not, then you probably don't have to deal with this. But if you, the, the one thing about men is that we will literally look at something right in front of me, like this beer bottle. I could literally be looking for this beer bottle and spend a good f- five minutes 
maybe 10 minutes. I might even leave and come back until I realize that it's right in front of me. Because, dude, we just, like, sometimes I'd be like, holy shit, it's right there. But it only works for, like, yourself. Yeah. Like, if you want to help somebody else, like, you're on top of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, exactly. the minute it's, like, on your own, like, if you're looking for your own thing, it's 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 gone. It's it's literally invisible for you. Like, your brain blocks it. But, like, the minute it's for somebody else, like, you just you hone. Like, you have, like, an echo location. Yeah. You just know exactly where it's at. There's like, this TikTok. Hey, I kind of forgot this. You're, like top stair like top floor third bedroom around the corner hidden under like a pile of this you're like how'd you know i don't know i glanced it like two weeks ago i don't know if you can find this tick sorry to bounce you around then we'll watch the south park episode but now she knows uh, how i feel yeah i know <laughs> yeah uh there's a tiktok of like this girl asking your boyfriend like where a uh, rubber band is or or something and he's like the bottom of the floor somewhere else so i don't know what that would I, be good. Have i have an it? idea of what you're talking about yeah, yeah i've yeah, seen yeah. videos at least like making jokes around that same thing uh i don't know what to what what do you look up on the internet isn't that like an add joke yeah i think so no 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 it's a, it's like men are amazing and then it's like Oh, yeah, because it's at the whole, like, random location thing. Yeah. I don't know what the what the wordage to look that up would be myself. As someone with Google on my resume. Um, Very upset, and I understand. Men. <laughs> Dude, you, your FBI agent has to have a feel a day. Let's see, if, see if I can fucking find it. I don't know. We'll we'll look for it later. Yeah, Let's go back unaborn, to the South Park. Unaborn. It's a brand new exclusive event with all your favorite South Park characters. There's Cartman. I had explosive diarrhea all night. <laughs> Dude, school is going to be so awesome today. Butters! Oh, hamburgers. And oh my god, they killed Kenny! I like big boobs. How does this even make any sense? It makes perfect sense. I think the problem is you. South Park. Exclusive <laughs> event streaming on I can't wait for this episode. Dude. That That is going to be pretty good. It's going to be so good. It's going to be so good. Just Cartman's a black woman now. <laughs> you know, I can, that one at least makes sense. Yeah. He he has independent black woman energy. Yeah. You also make the most controversial one like a black woman and then it, it instantly becomes like better. Yeah. You know what I mean? The last the, the, It's wild that his fit actually works for her. Yeah, they made it work, dude. Cuz if if Cartman was a black let me okay, sorry about that. Cartman is a black woman. Okay? If that's how Cartman wants to identify, then then uh she is more – there you go. Points on the board, son. Slam dunk. Ha. Sometimes you got to pat yourself on the back when you get the gender right, bro. <laughs> this is going to be great though. It's perfect because like South Park is so good at kind of showing like all the crazy shit in our society. And this is one of the craziest shit. It's like how, yeah. how, how, how the fuck are you going to change main characters of – and the only reason that it's fucked up is because there's already characters established. You know what I mean? Like, why the fuck would you change, like, fundamental parts of, like, who they are? I think that's the main gripe that most people are having nowadays. It's not really the fact that, like, people are mad that, you know, there's now other representation. It's more the fact that, like, these are very just long-term designated characters that are now just rewriting a story without... For a reason, like we yeah. could just make a new story and have rep representation of whoever in that. Matt Damon said it really, like, really good. There's a video of him talking about this where he says, uh, if you're going to use, like, diversity should be done in the writing phase of the show and not in casting. Makes sense. I mean, so create original stories. Yeah. With original characters. Of, yeah. of with original characters well, like that introduce – that like has diversity as a part of its core. But you can't just like randomly throw it in into places where it doesn't belong. That being said, I think like Star Wars always did this really well if you think about it, right? Because Star Wars like had diversity at its core. 
you think about it, because you had all of these aliens, not even just race, it was, it was like actual species, species yeah. too, you know? And so when you saw a fucking black person in the background, or you saw, like, you know, and you have, you have like, black Jedis, right? It didn't feel weird. It didn't feel abrasive. It didn't feel like it's jumping off the screen at you and being like, I'm here for a reason. Yeah, you know, we question the color of the lightsabers more than the color of, their, of who they <laughs> exactly. were. Exactly. The minute, like, the minute Mace Windu put out a purple it. saber, we were just like, hold the fuck up. Yeah, like, that's possible. We were like, that color is a little weird. What's going on now? Yeah, what's going on? <laughs> you were like, purple, hold on. And then they just, like, made up some shit on the, on the spot. <laughs> well... I don't remember what I don't remember in the original um, legacy what they originally if they had anything in the movies explaining it, but like, yeah. it does make sense. It's literally he's he he falls in the middle like he, he's basically doesn't it have other meaning too though? It's literally purple is literally what you get between blue and uh, red. He's just he's just down the middle. Yeah, it's essentially like because <laughs> Sith is Alps like Sith is absolute. It's Jedi has like their own path. Um, that's actually like what Anakin was supposed to be, um, being the chosen one. Though it was supposed to be ba- – the whole thing is like the probably supposed to bring balance to the force. It's not making the good win or the bad lose. It's literally bringing the dark side and well, the good side together, making the purple. Mace it, Windu if you think was about on top it, of it from the beginning. He you, had the right yeah, idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you think about it, technically Darth Vader did bring – He did. Like – Yeah, that, that was the very end of the movie. I literally watched like a little video of George Lucas explaining it. About how, like, he's supposed to be the chosen one and, like, him falling off his path to become Darth Vader. Everyone's like, oh, he did, he wasn't the chosen one. Yeah. But, like, that was, like, when he, at the very end of the original. Skywalker wasn't the chosen. Skywalker, Skywalker lost. He took down Palpatine. Well, remember, Disney has retconned a lot of what Lucas wrote. The eighth one was supposed to be the last. Yeah, but he would have, Luke would have been dead if, 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 um, if he didn't, if Darth Vader didn't take over, Anakin, yeah, Anakin was the chosen one. Yeah, and he, that after he became Darth Vader, that's that's when he became. Um, um, that's like at the very end when he yeah. took off his mask, it's looked at, and he just said like, "Let me look at you with my own eyes." That was him killing Vader, and then becoming Anakin again. Yeah. And that's when he took out Palpatine and the Death Star. That was essentially him fulfilling the prophecy. He done, he done fulfilled it, you know? I, so, like, at least that was, like, what Lucas said in, like, a little interview I watched. I feel like I that's... I was like, okay, okay. I feel like that's prophecies across, <clears throat> like, every... <clears throat> across, like, every stream of, uh, of like, content. You oh, know yeah. what I mean? Just in general. Like, every prophecy, the idea is, is that, like, you get this amazing thing. You're supposed to be super special. But in the end, like, it sucks for you. You know what I mean? Like you always end up getting like fucked over. Fucking Spider Man. Yeah. Most tra- like tragic character ever. Spider Man is tragic. Like people forget it. It's so funny. Like there's this kid that's jumping around the street. His whole back like, is shit. Dude, there's a kid who is going around fighting crime because he was traumatized by like a family death and was like bullied and had all these issues he's just going around fighting crime his, and he, his love dies and then he has to join the avengers and like save the world this guy's like i'm 16 dude like i still have my virginity bro is this the miles miles spider-man that you're talking about no no, no uh no the like the spider-man that joined like marvel and stuff like that i'm just saying like he has to save the world you know and he goes to you go oh, and, yeah, like, all versions still, of spider-man yeah. in one way or another just fuck like all everything that happens around him is just ass like every time they get someone in love like they either leave them break his heart or get murdered or like anytime something good starts happening to him just something much worse it ends up happening and and it's like bro you just this man literally cannot win and who's who's more hornier than like a 16 year old boy you're telling me that i gotta get bit by a spider have some weird shit come out of my like my arms and on top of that i have to save the world wow horny i don't know if spider-man was originally 16 he was a he was a college guy he, he was super smart and in college do, do, does that change the amount of fucking spider juice that's accumulating in his spider balls no yes I don't know. I don't know about you, bro. But like when I was like like peak fifteen, sixteen, compared to when I'm like 
19, 20. Don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm, I'm still dogging down, but I'm not like, <laughs> I'm a dog still. But like, you know, when you're 16, you're sitting there and you're not even thinking about anything. You're, you're just getting hard because your body doesn't know what the fuck's happening. You know, you just like, you're, you're 20. You're, you're at least thinking about it, but I guess, you, you control it. You know, I guess life's a little bit different for a lot for Latinos. I don't know what it is. That shit don't turn off until you t- hit 30. You just got that like that permanent Viagra. Actually, no. I, you, you hit like four days and you still haven't caught a doctor. Dude. Like you know how many, like you know how many kids some of these like these Mexican dads are pumping out, bro. They're fucking lining it up. If if you have to be okay, he was seventeen and seventeen introduced, the you're, original. Okay. You're telling me you weren't a horn dog at seventeen? Oh, I, I think I even just said, I to like 20, I'm still dogging. The only like, thing a fucking 17-year-old can think about is, oh, 100%, is, is pussy. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah, it. I, I thought he was like college age, you no, know, I'm like, you sure know, still thinking like about nothing but sex, yeah. but like this kid's also like a genius. That's why he does like half the shit he's able to do is he's also just super fucking smart. Yeah. Imagine like a fucking 17-year-old okay. girl. <laughs> you like go to the 17 year old girl you're like hey you have these con- abilities you're gonna have to fucking come save the world out of context that beginning was such an odd question to ask somebody right I mean it gets weird <laughs> as soon as you mention it as a girl yeah it, just come into somebody imagine a 17 year old girl I'd rather not if you say it like that <laughs> like you can't imagine that where's the cutoff as it gets too young like imagine a two year old baby see that's not weird I I I I'm gonna disagree with this statement. To imagine a baby, babies are I fairly mean, normal. I mean, if you just say like imagine a baby, sure. But if you're getting like real specific with it for some reason, I don't know. I'm <laughs> just a the sus. more specific it gets, yeah, the like, it's, it gets, it's getting yeah. a little sus at that point. So I don't. Why am I imagining this? <laughs> it's like, why are you making me do this? <laughs> why? Why are you doing it? You're like, you'll see, you'll see. <laughs> no, that's what I'm saying. It's like it's a fucking kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, no, no, no. I 100. No, I agree. Then, yeah. You gotta be Spider Man and like and rope around while you got a boner. How the fuck? How do you and function fucking, with and that? that tight ass and those tights, bro. What if has something happens? What if you gotta go like save somebody? Like this shit's not going down. You know you haven't hit that point in your life. It's just the fifth place to shoot webs from. Know. All I'm saying is, is that I don't think Spider Man does enough to to talk about the puberty that this kid's like just hit. <laughs> you know. That he's going around saving the world. It is what it is, I guess. It is what it is. You know? But I guess, like, younger... We used to do so much more when we were younger. You know? It's only until recently that I think 17 was considered, uh, like, a young age. Oh, no, 100%. Because before, like, that was adults. Especially for, uh... Oh, man. Because, like, we used to only live to, like... Like, in general, people only used to live to, like, 30 or 40 for, like, most of human existence. Yeah. I you mean, hear that, Rose? Okay. Y'all were just making the bombs. We had to be in the fucking trenches. <laughs> we had to be in the trenches just being like, fuck. Like, one of these one of these shells is going to, like, hit this trench and we're going to be fucked. Thanks, Rosie. Not anymore, though. Not anymore. Did you hear? Did you know? Did you know? What, female draft? Look up female draft. I've I've been hearing a requirement for a woman to register as a draft back on the play. Yeah, I think they're moves closer to making women register. There is a bill going through that will require women to also register for the draft. Thirty twenty three. 23 yeah, That's what she wants it to be. 30, 23. Yeah, yeah. Just like, so <laughs> the next, like, thousand years. Starts like, playing the cyberpunk to... music. Yeah. Big man, sing me in. Reload me. You got a lighter? A lighter? No. No, I got the I got the pin. I got that blicky. You got that blinky? I got that blinky. 42. I don't know. I like it. It's just it's a good vibe. So let's hold off. It's been a little chaotic, but I mean, it's just been. Fu- I think it's just been a good. It's one. just been fun. That's it. That's what. That's all that matters. You know, from here on out, I don't. I think it's at least been engaging. I feel like. I feel like the more we force it, the more it kind of feels. Yeah, this has just been a good natural flow. Yeah. Anyways, so we're back. Um, yeah, Congress moves to closer to making women register for the draft. Is this like a bill or something? 
No, that's a website. What? <laughs> I'm just a bill. <laughs> A lonely just, bill <laughs> on, Capitol, on Hill. Capitol Hill. See, Rose, you don't know what we're talking about, do you? Yeah, I do. Oh, damn, yes. <laughs> yeah, she's from an old part of America, so True. she got. They were. They were. Dude, a little so bit many. You know, here's the thing: so many kids that we work with that like are around like 18, 19, 20, and younger. Like they don't know Schoolhouse Rock. Yeah. Like I. Yeah. No, they don't know majority of the shit yeah. I can reference. No. Everyone, like, you, I think the cutoff is age is right around 20 to 19 for a lot of things. Like, you give me a lot of surprises, some of the things you know, but there's still quite a bit you haven't from the same period. Um, yeah, like, just a lot. Yeah, especially, like, 18 under. Dude, I oh, had I don't a, know shit. I, I, I had driving. a breakdown when I turned 26. I don't know what it was, but passing that that threshold of, like, quarter – like the first quarter officially because I that's what I would consider young, you know, like the first quarter of your life is like when you can still say that you're young, you know, and to be honest, like to, you probably probably into your like early 30s, you're still young, you know, because then I feel something happens in your 30s where you go from young to like, you know, kind of a, as like a real adult who's gone through stuff. You probably have kids. You know, you probably have a lot of stuff going on. Uh, and then the next threshold is, what, what would you say, like 50? Six, no, 60. 60 is when you get into old. Well, see, and then, well, I think, here's the other thing. There's a big, uh, it also depends on what your parents age. Like, for example, both of my parents passed around like 65, 68. I guess by so that I standard, hit like yeah. So I hit like 31. I'm essentially looking at, that's my half-life, bro. <laughs> like well you know we're gonna enjoy it while you're here yeah like you know? I'm, I'm past a quarter at this point as is and you can hit the break hit I'm, a, the, I'm hit about a third <laughs> i'm a little over a third as is if that's like how i mean here's the thing that my grandparents on my dad's side they're still kicking they're like 90s and they're fine yeah um my mom's all passed away but like who knows, so like dude? i'm i think there's gonna be a significant like advancement in medical technology I mean, in the next been. like 50 years. Probably. Uh, but no, but think about it because most of the advancement has been happening because like we have more technology and we like started with like the internet made a huge difference too because we can share ideas now. But with AI, it's going to be able to help take over a lot of simple processes and also replicate a lot of tests that you like. We're getting better with sig- automation in yeah. general. And plus the thing about testing is like the more – times you can do it the more accurate it becomes and then a better idea that you have it's like just like a sample rate you know it's like you sample so much but the problem is it's like with humans we have a hard time like keeping like ram um like storage you know we have like instant storage to just kind of sit from right we that a lot of that is assumptive with humans but with ai and with computers that's what they're really good at they have perfect memory Mm -hmm. there's never a thing that they can get wrong unless like you know other shit happens but for the most part so now you can like use that technology to significantly move up research i do think there will be a time when it kind of plateaus off um just like that um oh what is it called like uh, when cpus get so small there's a certain point that you can't actually keep advancing them I know what you're talking about. I don't it's know. It's something like, law. I don't know what the exact yeah, term for that is, though. It's like um, uh, CPUs stopped advancing law. <laughs> <laughs> Moore's law. Yeah. So Moore's law essentially states that there's only like there's only it's so small you can basically create a node, right? Observation that the number of transistors in an integrated circuit doubles 
every two years. That's Moore's law is an observation and, pro and projection of a historical trend, rather than a few, rather than a law of physics. It's an empirical relationship linked to the gains from experience and production. And so eventually, it like kind of wears off. So now we've gotten to the point where we can no longer double our CPU like um, capabilities. I think that I think it dropped off sometime in like the early 2000s. We were, or I think like 2000. I think it was like 2014 or whatever when it when it actually happened. But like there was a point when we could no longer every year double our usage in like CPUs by just like making the resistor the transistors um, like more and more small. And so basically, what it's pointing at is like there's going to be a point when our computers stop becoming more powerful. There's going to be a limit at some point when our computers are no longer capable of improving on themselves and that there's like this this limit to come off and the answer to that is actually like quantum computing right because essentially it's you instead of using bits they use um what do they call them uh, like i have qubits like, yeah they're called qubits they're called qubits so it's like multiple like bits at a time but it's so i think this is going to really advance um like medical stuff and our like our ability to check for stuff that's not also preventative medicine can become more of a thing right because most of the time what we do is we just have medicine it's like it's like reactive medicine it's like something happens then you come in Right. And then you get your your medicine and then you get better. Right. Which is actually like the worst way, the worst way to deal with your health. Right. Because then most of the time you're not even aware, you know, you just go in when things get really bad and it's right. already like Damage too already far yeah. at that point. And in fact, I have a perfect example for this. Um, my lovely girlfriend, <clears throat> for whatever reason, got strep dude strep out of all the fucking things you can get she got strep and basically she like yeah you know, she didn't know blah 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 she calls me to let me know <laughs> you know hey you're gonna <laughs> you're gonna go through this shit right now and i was like fuck that i hate strep i remember when i was a kid and i had strep it's the worst shit ever like you're just you're just basically like unable to do anything so i went straight to the fucking urgent care like, from her telling me, like, hey, you probably have strep, like, just letting you know, I went straight to the, I went straight to the urgent care, and they were like, so what's the problem? I'm like, well, I'm going to be sick. And they're like, wait, what do you mean? They're like, I'm going to be sick. Like, I definitely got infected. Well, like, they literally told me this at, at, like, the urgent care. They're like, go home, and when you start feeling symptoms, you can come back and, like, take the medicine to, like, get rid of it. I'm like, well, then why wouldn't I just take it now? And they're like, well, we just don't know, like, for sure if you have it or not. Oh, yeah. And I mean, there's a chance your body's going to naturally fight it off. That <laughs> Dude, is preventative medicine. Yeah. My, it's called your immune system. My, yeah, yeah. My, but my doctor <laughs> was literally like, well, like, we don't know if you have it. I'm like, bro, it's, believe me, I got it. I got it. whatever was in her mouth on that day because that, she got me sick on my birthday. <laughs> on my birthday bro she got me sick and so i was like i have it but this doctor tried like pretty hard to get me to just come back when i have symptoms i was like can you just like give me the medicine now so i can start taking it let me tell you the difference between when you get sick and then start taking medicine when you have symptoms versus taking your medicine before you have symptoms was night and day it's terrible advice. I'm I'm just gonna call you out right now. That's literally how you get antibiotic resistant strains of bacteria like we're getting nowadays. Medicine, especially if you're talking about um, something bacterial like strep instead of viral, uh, it's just antibiotics. And if you end up taking those beforehand or like start taking them all the time just as preventative, what ends up happening is that then those I'm not, no, 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 no. I'm not saying like I'm not saying like uh, like take it once a week to start feel like just in case you get it. No, I'm saying like if you know for a fact you're going to be sick and your symptoms aren't that bad and you're at the very beginning take of a lot it, of vitamin C. Fucking ram that shit down because I took. Uh, I'm telling you right now, I didn't feel any of the symptoms from strep. I it felt like I was basically there. I just took. Uh, I took like penicillin. I think I took took one. You can ramp it up once you're like once you actually feel your symptoms. But that was the easiest cold I've ever had before, because like 
I knew for a fact that it was going to be happening. But I think what it does is it smooths it out from the beginning instead of just like hitting you like a fucking wall at first. And that was really nice. That was really nice. But, I mean, you're probably right. Look, kids, folks who are watching, I am not a medical official, okay? I'm not, I'm not even, like, smart. I'm a little bit, but, you know, but not that kind of level of smart. But, no, I, do, I think you're going to live long. I think you're going to live a lot longer than you think. I'm open. Unless there's, like, you know... A drunk driver out there somewhere in fucking 15 years. See, that's, <laughs> the thing. You, that's the one thing. No matter how or good war. your health is, you never yeah. know. Speaking of war, dude, we fucking... Oh, my God. Look, all right. Both him and I are undiagnosed ADD. Oh, I'm diagnosed. For fucking sure. Oh, like, I'm diagnosed. Oh, you're diagnosed? I've been diagnosed since I was in, like, seventh grade, dude. Yeah? Do you think Do you think I have it based off of, like, what you experience versus, like, how you see I act? It's it's certainly possible. The thing with, I mean, it, it, it's probably a really good chance. I mean, the thing with ADD is like there's a fat fucking spectrum about it. Like, yeah, the, the it's amount just of like, symptoms you can have. That it's can just like the tism. ADD. Like, everyone, no, it is. Like, there's such a it's, huge spectrum. It's its own mental the disorder. The chances yeah. of you having a small percentage of it, I think, like, it's, the, it's still its own neurodivergency. Yeah. I think the human condition is essentially like a whole spectrum of disorders, right, and orders, right, that is. That essentially make up the 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 majority of the population, but it's so little that it doesn't really affect your life. And then in rare instances, you have people where like that is definitely a huge thing. Like I think most people have. That's just, this is why when I hear the newest generation be like, "I have anxiety" or "I have depression," it's like, "Bitch, everybody has that." Who? doesn't have anxiety and depression literally every human that has been on this on the face of this planet has had some form of depression or anxiety at a certain time it is part of the human experience right and some people have it so bad that it's considered a condition but for the most part most people just have different like variants of like consistency when it comes to these things yeah, I think nowadays we've kind of taken it to a point where it's a little too far as far as some of it goes. I mean, we're overdiagnosing. But like, I mean, don't get me wrong. There's like you can like especially like I've known a lot of people that definitely have some messed up brain chemicals and like it, it's it's not functioning like 100%. And yeah, then there's but that's, some people I know that that's are also rare. Just, yeah, and like it's rare. Yeah, and that's that's literally what defines like neurotypical and neurodivergent. That's why there's a little like a typical way your a brain works, and then there's a weird way the brain works, and that's a very you know basic you know child version of what those two mean. But yeah. basically, like, yeah, I'm, I mean, even at where I work, I've known a lot of people that are just like, oh, I have anxiety, I I can't yeah. deal with people, and I'm like. Bitch, you're you're fine. Like, you're fine. You, Get you're, over you're it. You're really dealing with the human you're emotion. You're gonna be okay. Like, it's called stress. You have to deal yeah. with it. Like, you, I'm sorry. That reminds me of the Candace Owen. <laughs> She's so. Do you know who Candace Owen is? The name's familiar. She's this like black um, Republican. Sorry, I put so much pause after black. I didn't feel too. Good. <laughs> I was about to say, She's whoa. black. Republican. She's a Republican. <laughs> See, right off the bat, yeah, I mean, that makes sense. That's yeah, weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's this girl. Um, and she's basically like a pundit or whatever. I don't even know what that word really means, but she's like a basically a personality when it comes to the right. She is right. Her she has some crazy shit that she says. She has some stuff that makes sense. Um, she, you know, she, just like most political figures, there's some truth and some problems, right? But anyway, so she's pregnant as fuck, and there's this video of her, um, like at this uh, rally or whatever or this. Whatever, whatever it was at the university, and like all these, <laughs> all these Gen Z like PC kids come up to like own her, and one of the thing, like one of the people say, um, what does she say to her? It's like congratulations, sweetheart. Let's see if that works. Um, this girl's like, what do you say about me being non-binary? Because I know who I am, and she was just like, congratulations, sweetheart. <laughs> Yeah, there you go. Oh, it's a fucking daily now. Oh my god. It's making its rounds though. As a non-binary person, what do you have to tell me about my identity? Because I know for a fact I'm not confused. Okay, next 
next question. Great statement. That's a statement. That's a statement. <laughs> okay. You know your identity. You're not confused. Congratulations, sweetheart. Thank you very much, Rachel. <laughs> At one point, she's like, I am too pregnant for this bullshit. <laughs> I, Sheila was like, all right, next question. That's yeah. a statement. Okay, move on. She was like, all right, well, I'm here for questions. Not, move on. She's like, what do you want me to say? Yeah. She's like, congratulations. I'm very happy you know your identity. Like, I'm, I'm sorry that was a crisis for you. Yeah, bro. It's just, it's just, the problem is, it's like, as soon as everything's a problem, then it just creates more problems. You know, there is a certain point when you have to, like, identify, like, hey, these are some issues for some people. But when it becomes everyone, like, it becomes, you know, it's like, dude, you're fine. You're just, you're acting like this so you can get, like, some attention. And then there's real people who have issues, and then they end up getting the bitter end of it, you know? Yeah. I never thought that mental illness, could you imagine? Dude, like, during the age of our grandfathers and, like, fathers, the idea that mental illness would become popular would make them lose their shit. They're like, what the fuck are you talking Have about? If you said that, you would end up in the asylum. Oh, yeah, 100%. They would do fucked up shit to you for to the rest of your life. You would end up becoming crazy. How many people you think, like, weren't crazy? Straight to the lobotomy chair. Yeah, what if how many how many people you think weren't crazy, but then they just got sent to an insane asylum and that like literally made them crazy? Oh, a shit ton. Yeah. Oh, I guarantee that, that would a, make a me lot. fucking crazy, for sure. You know, and I can't. It, it's a terrible. I mean, even nowadays they're fucking horrible. I couldn't imagine how terrible they would have been a hundred years ago. I mean, if, if in twenty twenty three they're still an absolutely sadistic, cruel place to end up, a hundred years ago. Fuck, dude, 200 years ago? Like, holy shit. Like, there's literally no standard. At that point, you're just a guinea Dude, pig. after 200 years ago, there weren't places. There just wasn't places. You just, yeah, you got the bullet. You just, you either, you either get the bullet you or you end up, like, homeless. In prison. No, you just went to prison. That was the biggest thing. Because if you're homeless, they didn't want to deal with you. Yeah, that's true. They would just arrest you. You act crazy, you could just go to jail. Look, history, skip, history, skip, skip, go and go straight to jail is not fun for most people ever. Like it's way better now. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like it, if you're poor, if you're poor on earth now, and that means that you could be like pretty damn poor. They actually have done studies to show that that is more, um, it's more of healthy living than it was to be a king back in like, um, like back in the olden age. Oh yeah, I'm just talking about just like basic standards of hygiene. Mostly because of plumbing. Like mm -hmm. Plumbing was a huge plumbing and the fact that we wash our hands. Yeah, there was just no, <laughs> there's like nothing. So it's like if you're rich, like you you were able to be, you know, you were able to clean yourself and stuff like that. Even though a lot of times it was seen as bad because most people in the dark ages believed that um, diseases came from water, so they refused to clean themselves. Because they were worried that they would get diseases from bathing, dude. <laughs> there was a lot of weird things around it. Um, That's also why everybody was drunk as fuck 24-7 because the water was bad. So they just ended up drinking wine. That is very true. That's um, – I don't know if you knew, but that's actually kind of – like with the whole washing thing, that's actually why we started wearing shoes. That's like a main thing is because back in like biblical times um, yeah. to enter synagogues and churches, they had two – you could either wear uh, wear your – like Sunday shoes were a thing. You could either pull out your shoes and wear them into the church or you uh, – if you came in barefoot, you had to come in with clean feet. But most churches or synagogues didn't have um, like a well outside or they didn't yeah. have like a way to clean yourself. And since most people didn't at home, um, you couldn't come in with dirty feet. So people just started wearing shoes. It's true. You know what those people would also be freaking out about is the potential of like women becoming significant part of war. Like back then, I was fucking what? What a woman? Are you insinuating that a woman? You know, but now it's actually fucking happening. Pull it back up. I will this give credit. To be fair, I mean, depending on like what historical region, I think women ended up in like. Some real early on historical tribe. I remember exactly what Russia. It was. Russia has always allowed women yeah. to fight, mostly because Russia's fighting game is a numbers game. They just throw bodies at at all of their wars. Um, also, like a lot of like Nordic, uh, a lot of Nordic places, women also were a part of like war. There's a lot and of stuff other, like that. There's yeah. a lot of um, Euro European and Eastern continents that have your uh, that have like 
long history as a female warriors. Yeah. Um, I think somewhere in the Mediterranean, they were actually one of the first places. Somewhere around Greece, Aspen, um, Greece, um, Athens, somewhere around there. They uh, they were actually the first people. They had um, a full woman council. They were the first ever, like, they were governed by women, period. Like, they didn't have a single man on leading. Dude, they was trying everything out down there. They was trying everything. They're like, hey, we in this dope-ass place, and we got space, dog, so let's fucking do it all. But, yeah, look, I think women have always been a significant, like, part of history, but wars, for the most part, is like 99% men still. Unfortunately. <laughs> a lot of dudes got murked back then. Um, but now we're seeing an unprecedented change with um, – in the United States, they might be passing a bill that would, that would force women to sign up for the draft, which basically is – it's like every man has to sign up for the draft – um, when you apply for a um, like a grant or like a loan, you have to sign up for the special service. I mean, not a loan, but like a grant. Like if you look up, if you try to get FAFSA, they, they force you to sign up for the selective service. And you just gotta hope. <laughs> you just gotta hope that there's not a war, dude. Yeah. But if they really are considering passing this bill, that means we're going to war, dude. You don't pass this bill unless you need bodies. You do not pass this bill unless you need bodies. What does it say? Uh, it's proposed a confusingly worded system, mandatory military service for women on a voluntary basis. What the fuck? So they still going to let you give a choice? No woman's going to fucking want to do that. Well, I guess not the majority of them, at least. Kill what a weird way of freight. Mandatory military service for women on a voluntary basis. You can't have mandatory and voluntary. In the same sentence. Yeah, like, I mean, what? The term voluntary mandatory. Women will be drafted on a voluntary basis, but once drafted, it will be mandatory to serve for six months? We get four years. <laughs> What kind of bullshit is this? If you're going to do it, at least do it. What kind of... I'd be, like, I'd be, I would get drafted for six months. Shit. I'll take a vacation. Yeah. <laughs> All right. You know what? Let's make a toast now. If World War III hap happens, I'm turning into Andrea and you're turning into what? What would your woman name be? Rose, help out. Jenny. Jenny? Jenny. Can you see him as a Jenny? I think it could work. I'm just thinking close to Jeremiah. Yeah. I don't know anything that what about, like Jenny. What about... What about Maya? Janice. Maya. Yeah. I yeah, see Maya. a Maya. You're a Maya. <laughs> Janice. Yeah, Maya. Je Jenny would be your middle name. Maya, Jenny. Farthing. Yeah, that's a good. Maya, I like Maya, it. Maya, Jenny. Maya, Jenny sounds so fucking white trash. Maya, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I grew up in a goddamn Look trailer park. All right. If the World War Three happening, like we're switching sides and we all coming on to your side, we're doing six months together, right? All right. Cheers. We doing six months together. I'll I got my hair. I'll grow. I'll, you know, I'll just shave. We just got shaved, bro. I just stop getting haircuts. Yeah, just stop I'll get my long haircuts. hair back. We'll shave six months. I'm my long hair again. I'll be ready. You know what the best part is, bro. We can fucking we could we could do that. And on top of that, we could just be gay, which means we're still in the girls. Yeah, it's fucking sick. Honestly, they got it figured out, dude. I don't know why I've been judging. Like, to be. To be honest, it's like you could be anything no, you want. No, hold on. What if you claim as non-binary? Can you just not be drafted? Yeah. Only, no, no. They're only, gonna they're gonna want to draft you more because only you're and, them. You've more people. You considered more people. It's not on the draft form. though. Only men yeah. and women can be drafted. You're they them. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> you're immune. <laughs> Dude, imagine you got drafted <laughs> by the army, but you're non-binary. So instead of getting a whole squad, it's just you. <laughs> it's just we're sending we're, them in. We're, yeah, we're <laughs> yeah, and it's just like one scared, like All androgynous hair, person in the fucking hair, jungle. Purple hair, the fucking it just piercings everywhere. Yeah, 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 just like in the in the jungle. Just like what the fuck be like well you got a gun or use them be like it doesn't matter okay at that time they'd be on the fucking phone like it's i'm not non-binary okay fine fine i get it and i'm like sorry you signed up you're they them 
I don't know, man. I think that goes against Geneva Conventions. I'm pretty sure we're not allowed to use toxic warfare. Ooh. Oh. Yeah. yeah. No. I, I don't know. Look, here's the thing. <laughs> That'll be funny, dude. It's like to see to see a bunch of liberals on the <laughs> on the battlefield would be so funny. Oh my god. As long as we're on their front um, lines, we'll be fine. It'll be fun. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, I think it's great. Wow. <laughs> Let's send them all to the front lines, I said. <laughs> he says they got to shoot. <laughs> I think we should let everyone into the military service. Wow. <laughs> yeah, dude. I did, That's so funny to think about, like, you know, somebody with, like, a pronoun, like, tag on their, while they're, like, in war. You know, they, they're all suited up. They just gonna just gonna let everybody just do. You can think about it, because if if you have World War Three, that means that a significant portion of the people that are gonna be on that warship with you are gonna be like your local fucking trans activists. All the like all the current eighteen plus year old fucking. Yeah, which like, look, I don't have any problem with it. We probably need them, you know. We need the bodies. We need but... the bodies. We need the, you know, we need people. That's how wars are won is with people. But the thing is, is like when you think about war, you think about Republican dudes. Am I wrong? Like you think about a guy with like a big fucking beard. You know, you're not thinking about equality when you're getting shot at by like a bunch of like Afghanis across a fucking mountain. You know, it's like it's just not a big part of who you are. Also, like guns. Like how how do you how can you be against guns and then you get drafted? Yeah. That's going to be, like, the biggest thing I think nowadays is, like, for trying to figure out what that draft is. So many people are against it nowadays. And, like, they're going to be like, all right, well, here, you get to handle out an M4. They're going to be like, ha, AR, assault rifle. They're going to be like, no, no, this is an M4. Give them claim. It's not even having give, in it. Just give them claymores and just fucking strap that shit to their front and be like, it's not a gun. Hit him with the Middle East standard, huh? <laughs> Hit him. Yeah. You're pulling out the Uno reverse card. So how, so how do you like it? Yeah. All right, go out there, run at them, and yell something. Like, why? Be like, they misgendered you. Ah! <laughs> I'm going to say them! <laughs> the infidels are sending across their non-binary. <laughs> their hair their hair comes colorful, but the pain is deep. <laughs> <laughs> They're just fucking blowing oh, up. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Hey, you know what though? You know, it'd be a good good use. It'd work. Yeah, you can't you can't you can't fight efficiency. Yeah. That's true. I mean, I don't know, dude. I, it's funny until you're like actually in a squad full of like people who are like too more worried about their identity than they are like not getting everyone killed. Just not getting shot. Yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean. And like for the, the most minute part, I'm at the trench with somebody, and I'm like. I, I fucking go say man or something, and they're like, don't you assume my gender. I'm like, I swear to God, I will throw you out of this trench. I, <laughs> like, I do not have time for this right now, soldier. Bro, bro, there's fucking mortars going on. Don't call me bro. Bro? <laughs> like, <laughs> so you grab him by the foot and just go, yeet. Yeah. <laughs> no, dude, we got to be inclusive. They got to stay in the fucking trenches. We just got to make sure we gender everyone correctly. It's just, yeah, I just, I can't picture that. And that's why I'm not worried about war. Because I can't picture that. I can't, like, there, there's no way. There's definitely not going to be a civil war. Definitely not going to be Thank a civil God war. Thank God we're going to drones. Right? Right? What is like, drone strike at this point? Who needs them? Dude, if there's a civil war, I'm not even a Republican. I'm going on the Republican side. The ha- uh, hands, hands fucking down. Hands, not a, not a single second do I stay on the liberal side. I, I honestly, I thought you were just gonna leave the country and just go to Colombia. I would probably do that. Yeah, that just, to, just to get away. You're from just me. like, I'm yeah. not gonna deal with it. I'm just gonna go back yeah. to the homeland. I all I have to do is go to Miami and all the Cubanos. Yeah, all the Cubans that talked about how much they love America and how this is the greatest country in the world. The second a war starts, we're gonna like, hey, hombre, you get a yacht and you're out of here. <laughs> get on my fucking boat, oh, we're going back home. <laughs> we ain't fucking with this shit. Going to the motherland. <laughs> yeah, they you can fight the trans people if you want, but we're going back to fucking Colombia. <laughs> I got my job. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got some contacts back home. <laughs> I'm just gonna do construction. 
Straight up, dude. We're not dealing with this shit. They just go all the Latinos. Like they just go back to agriculture. Yeah. Like the United States is filling up with more Latinos every single day, especially now. <laughs> they letting us all in, dude. Woo! We're just gonna turn into another South America. I'm kind of with it, but I'm kind of not. At least the food will be good, but there'll be more chaos. That's what comes with. Uh... <laughs> I don't know. I I take that over the trans chaos. That's true. That's true. At least they have gender norms. Yeah. Dude, this shit does not exist in, in Colombia. In fact, they try. There are small groups of people that try, and we're like, what the fuck are you talking Your, about? The language is literally gendered. Yeah, our language is literally gendered. Like, so that's what, that's what I fucking hate about Latinx. I hate, hate, hate Latinx. I saw one person, I think, when I, on like the, like the, t- tw- on like the two hours I was able to be on t- uh, Tinder when I tried it, uh... I, I think I did find one Latinx lady on there, and I was just like, oh, God, they exist. I swiped, I swiped left so fucking fast. She's. I, I wanted to swipe right out of curiosity and just, like, ask her about it. But at the she, same time, I just didn't want my brain to lose that much IQ. She's one of the stupid ones. She's one of the stupid I just, ones. I just – yeah, yeah. Honestly, that, that's how you know you're born in America. Yeah. Yeah, that shit does not fly anywhere else. No, America, that's how you know you're born. Like your parents came here, you're born here, you grew up yep. with all this current bullshit, yeah. and you're just like, I don't like my own culture. America is a fucking fairy tale, dude. It, literally, everything that happens here is wild. Like it's just so different compared to like the rest of the the place. And I think it's because like we have these huge oceans that separate us from most of the world, right? We realistically we only have like maybe like two neighbors: Canada, and Mexico. You you know that's like most other continents too, right? No, because not very many countries span the entire width of I'll, a continent. I'll give you that credit. You see what I mean? I'll give you credit to that. Because okay. we only have neighbors on the top and on the bottom. Yeah, you know we got our I mean? boots and we got our hat. Yeah, like we're we're the bisexuals of the world because we got tops and we got bottoms. And and we love and and we deal with them both. Although we do like our top a little bit more than our south, than our bottom. Let's be honest, okay? We like them a little bit more until they start picking up all of the fucking staffing jobs for fucking. <laughs> so they take all the staffing jobs for for cooking. Because I swear to God, I see a Mexican and at the back of every fucking kitchen on the face of this planet. You go to a kitchen, see if you can't find a Mexican. I dare you. My last job where the entire kitchen was just straight Hispanics. I couldn't speak a word of English. That's how you learn. That's how I know everything I know. That's how you learn. That's how I know everything I know. I felt Spanish three years in a row back in fucking white ass Elizabeth's high school. And um, it took me like not even a like it took me like two weeks of working there to like know almost everything I do now. (laughs) You know what's funny too is that all these Mexicans that would be at the fucking and that are in the back of the um, kitchen, like the same way they cook their food, it would be the exact same way they would fight in a war. Just nonchalant, just like ready to go home, take your nap, you know? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Just shows up. It's like, you know, I have a job. You know, tell me what I got to do. <sighs> Fuck, I actually just saw a comedian kind of do a bit about that. Yeah. <laughs> and, oh, no, no, it was it was an Asian joke, actually. Yeah. The uh, he, he pretty much made a kitchen joke talking about, like, how fucking, like, we have all these white guys in kitchen nowadays. And the menu will have, like, four fucking items. And we'll be back there fucking scrambling, trying to, like, get all this freaking shit put out, together. Dude. They're like, freaking yeah, out. Yeah, it was like, you have, like, this guy with, like, the hardest fucking tattoos and all this shit. In the back of the kitchen pan, like, yes, chef, yes, chef, I'm, I'm going, chef, I'm going. Yeah, this Gordon pan, Ramsay shit. He's yeah. pan frying yeah. scallops. <laughs> yeah. And then while you have like a, you know, a Chinese kitchen, they have like 487 items on the menu. It's like there's one guy back there just smoking his cigarette, just casually flipping the fucking walk, going over, just yeah, bro. cussing in Cantonese. There's just, <laughs> there's something to that magic. You know, there's something to that magic. Also, like, also fucking Latinos too. Like, they're not, dude, they could care less. They could care less. You know, they'll do what they have to do, and they'll do it good, but they just turn off for fucking, t- like, eight to ten hours a day. 
especially Mexicans, like they just turn off, they're like, just do their job and then fucking, you know, enjoy it. And like everyone else is freaking the fuck out. And then you have that one Mexican in the corner just be like singing, like, you know, and it's always, it's always Mexican music that plays. Even if it's like one or two Mexicans, so it's always they Mexican, get the yeah, music. They get yes. the music, you know, because that's their, that's our driving force, bro. You know what I mean? We need that musica to like keep us upbeat, you know. It, it 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 makes sense. It really it really does. But I like that's just that's that's the magic of America, you know. That all of this can be a can be a part here, you know. Even even fucking Bigfoot, even Bigfoot can be a part of the diversity that we experience here. And do you know and he's native in Colorado? Who knew he is native in Colorado? In this world, not only do we get the opportunity for our government to tell us that aliens are real, but now we get to see that Bigfoot is also real. Not even our government, even better, the Mexican government. The Mexican government's wild, and dude. They're wild, and they're willing to say anything. Like, I don't wait. Did you actually see that? Uh, yeah, the fake with, aliens. With, no, no, not no, like a Theo Vaughn talking to a Neil deGrasse Tyson about that. Oh, yeah, yeah, Did you yeah. see that? He was like, because apparently, like, before, Neil deGrasse Tyson literally was just like, I will believe when there's aliens, when they get the corpse and drag it into town square, they're like, here it is. And then Theo Vaughn was like, well, guess what? Somebody in Mexico got an alien corpse, drug it into town square, and said, here you go, government. That's, dude, Mexicans are just, dude. And Neil deGrasse, dude, he was not having it. He was not having it. Yeah, as, yeah. as normal, he can never, he can never just be happy. Yeah. So he was like, okay, well, the next day, you know, there, there. I was like, I swear to God, dude. So, Dude, like, Latinos, were too nonchalant, bro. We need to start taking things more seriously. Siri, like, that's our problem. We're too nonchalant. Across the board, like, we're too nonchalant. We're, we're, like, at the same time, we're very serious people, but we're also just as much unserious. Has Mexico ever won a war? They won their independence. So, yeah, I would consider that a war. They definitely won their independence. Because they have an independence day. How can you have an independence day if you didn't win? I don't know anything about their independence. Yeah, Mexico's definitely won a war. I'm pretty sure, did Mexico fight in World War II? Were they just chilling? I think so. <laughs> I know we threatened them a little bit, and like we took half their fucking country. That's how we got California, Texas, and Arizona. The Mexican Foreign Secretary took the lead in urging other Latin American countries to support the Allies as well. What's a belligerent? Does Mexico have its own tanks? What does a Mexico tank look like? That just sounds wonderful. <laughs> I'm allowed to say this, but the first thing that I fucking saw was just like a beefed up minivan with all these Mexicans in the fucking little, and there's like construction supplies <laughs> like falling out the back. I was thinking like the street corn guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they just, like, they just he's convert just pushing the, the cart, but there's like a few people on it with like guns. <laughs> and like one like one RPG unit sitting yeah. on the top, just like kind of like rotating himself around. Look, this might this might be racist, but I don't know why, but I can't imagine a Mexican army like anything that looks past like the like maybe nineteen like hundreds. You know what I mean? Like the the Mexican fighters that are on the horses with like the long shot guns. That's the only reason. I don't know why, but I, think I can't Humvee, imagine the Mexican army past that. I just I realistically I I think the clo like the high, the highest it gets. Technologically, I feel like it's just like you, you strap a Browning on the back of a pickup truck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But at that point, they just look like they just they just look like every uh, like Taliban fucking force. It's all desert. With a bunch of Toyotas. It's all sand. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. I'm just, it's, all, it's all bullets and it's still sand. I'm, it's, if it works, it works. They're on Toyotas. Just I would fucking do it. Running around. Dude, I swear to God. That's not it. That's not how their army actually looks but it's just funny to think I've about i've never seen the mexican army i've so never like, seen the mexican army either or the canadian army what does a canadian tank look like canadian army is actually pretty badass like canadian special bombs um, canadian special forces they look pretty cool really yeah can do canada is badass they do they're the reason we have the geneva the geneva convention I mean, you know, they're During like, war? hey, let's say sorry. No, literally, that, that was it. They committed, dude, they committed every war crime. And then afterwards, they're just like, ah, sorry. 
Ooh. Sorry. I'm not even kidding. <laughs> During war, <laughs> they committed so many war. They are the Canada. purveyor of the Geneva Convention. It was called the Geneva Checklist for them. That's why it happened in Canada. Canada commits every like war crime possible, and then they're just like, "Sorry." <laughs> I actually just learned this. Apparently, America's we we were actually just using a war crime for the past like sixteen years. No was, shit, dude. What's the point of being in the United fucking States it was unless a, we can commit? Like, war crimes unchecked. Yeah, like, literally every war for the past, like, six years has been a continuous war crime. And we didn't even know because, like, since, like, the 1980s, we've been looking into reformatting the MR, like, the... We wanted to find a better rifle. We wanted to make a better weapon, basically. It, they, the American government sunk, like, two, like, $38 million into all these manufacturers trying to make a better rifle than the M4 to make it more accurate. And then the government realized you could just put a fucking scope on it and make it more accurate. And they were like, oh, well, shit, we just wasted all this money. It doesn't get better. So, um, fuck. So they were like, okay, well, let's make a new program to kind of justify like wasting all this money. So they waste another like two, 20, like three, like another like two or three bill, like million dollars on this other program again, fails, but they get a really cool, like smart grenade launcher out of it, which is really cool. And they, use like, everybody loves it. The Rangers have been using this yeah. since like. Nine, like 19, like what, like fucking 2002, 2006 when it came up. Apparently, this thing is a war crime because they made exploding bullets to Geneva in like 1882. Exploding bullets have been illegal. And this thing shot little mini 25 millimeter grenade launch grenades. The exact amount that makes it a war crime yeah. is the amount of like how much explosive they yeah. can put in there. Did it's, you? It's a war crime. Did We've you been using know a war crime for six months, for that, six years, and no idea. Did you know that in World War One, Germany tried to make having a shotgun a war crime? Germany. Yes. Yeah. yes, I do remember this actually. Because we are too effective in trenches. Because in in trench warfare in World War One, they had a I forget what the name of it is, but it's like a act. It's like a a type of action shotgun that you could just you could just cock it back and pull it forward and it will literally shoot. So that means like all you have to do is just this, just fucking jack it like you're a seventh grader learning his body for the first time, and then everybody in that trench is just fucking dead, bro, just dead because it's just like think about like it's basically a machine like shotgun, and the United States, the United States was like, yeah, bro, Germany's telling us <laughs> to, to, like you know you know that's bad when they send over somebody they're like hey you're t- you're killing too many of us or so they're like remember that time you threw gas at us right <laughs> right like they're literally like they're literally committing one thing that was taken off of which is like chemical warfare that you're not supposed to do and they did that shit indiscriminately just fucking people over at Absolutely the time the wind would horrible. pick up and blow back on themselves yeah which what, is hilarious world war one would have been horrible to be a part of dude every war I, there's there's no winning you know sti- even nowadays like, you know statistically what the worst war to be in was i'll give you i'll give you two guesses oh, there, there was a study on this but I'll, I'll i'll give you two guesses vietnam I can imagine that as being I top five for sure. I could imagine much worse than getting a fucking shit stick pit trapped, honestly, or the fucking yeah. snake, or like the fucking uh, big uh, oh, dude, that a tunnel worse, rat. Yeah. No, I could imagine anything worse than that. Yeah. Um, I want to I, I want to say something like Desert Storm because that sounds like it would be something that'd be like oh, but I don't think Desert Storm was all that bad. It's the Civil War. The Civil War was Makes the sense. worst war to be in. Because there's no medical treatment. Because of yeah, that and a few other things. One, um, oh, and there's no tactical warfare. You just line up and fucking you just shoot. All right, you swap out. <laughs> shoot, you just stand there and get shot. Right. Yeah. So get this. Right. So the number one reason is because of the bullets that they used. Lead balls. And and the bullets they that they used were round and not pointed. The pointed ones are meant to essentially like go through you. Which is like, if you're going to get shot, bro, the best way to get shot is if that get comes in and comes out. You know what I mean? But in civil in the Civil War, 
something about the bullets, the way that they made them, made they them extremely soft, right? bouncy. And so when they went into your body, it would literally just bounce around the inside of your body and just create like in, like so much. Not to mention that this is when they started using a lot more cannonballs too. So that means they had a bunch of cannon fire. The war- Dude, imagine a cannonball fucking getting launched out and fucking hitting you. And Chase off your leg. The third reason was during the time of the Civil War was the hottest that the South has ever been like on record. I actually did not know that. That sounds yeah. terrible. It was like one of the worst few summers to have like this entire war so much that like people on top of heat exhaustion but that means any infections that you had almost were impervious to any kind of antibiotics right on top of that like if you get hit on your fucking arm right like down here dude like some place that's not like really that important you have to cut off they're just going to cut off your entire arm yeah because they, they don't have any better. Because they're just not going to even. And plus, like the people who are doing this are like you're like the the sixtieth person that they've seen today. So they're not thinking like, let me check to see if their pain is okay. You know what I mean? They're just they getting just with it. Just cut, they just throw it straight in. And like, this, and it was also the time before we had like um, before we had oh, what do we call it? That one um, pain killer that we use for everything. Morphine. Morphine. We didn't have any form of anesthetics. The best, the best you got, if you were lucky, was just pure ethanol. You you got you got drunk. Yeah. They they fucking take a bottle, pour it down your throat, and that was the best you got if you were lucky. When was morphine um, created? And then we'll and then we'll wrap stuff. Up. We'll wrap it up with uh, some Bigfoot footage. Yeah, that thing is like a minute long. That works out. Um, it was created in eighteen oh three. Between the years 1803 and 1817. Yeah. So morphing changed the game, dude. It literally changed the game because it allowed, like, people to take off, like, a huge amount of the pain, like, at the very end. And it didn't cause a bunch of hysteria. Also, people are going to fucking bleed out, bro, if you cut off their entire goddamn leg because they got shot in the fucking toe. So, yeah, that, that like, the Civil War was definitely the worst war to be a part of. You know, makes sense. No one. Although does. being hacked up by a fucking two-handed sword by some giant knight would fucking suck too. You know, especially because you're just laying there and you're just dying on this field. Essentially, like I said, man, there's there's no good. You you don't win. Yeah, there's just there's no there, you just there's no there's no good one to be a part of. There's no good ones to be a part of. Although I will say, probably the most modern wars would probably say, yeah. be the best. Especially if you're in like the chair force, if you're or gonna something. you're going to get shot, bro. You're going to get shot in the fucking heart or in the face, and you're just done, dude. Or you just get a bomb strike, like drone strike. You just, just drone strike. You just stop existing, done, basically. Yeah, yeah you're, you're there, and all of a sudden you're just done. Yeah. You're not even sure what happened. You're just. This is what happens when I get another male co host. You know, we start. We stop talking about dating. We start talking about like the, the intricacies of World War One and what trench fur means to the, the shotgun. Roman Empire. <laughs> Do you know the the, <laughs> <laughs> well, the Civil War due to the bullets uh, that actually created the worst? This is what being a man is all about. Okay, Tristan, Tristan Tate, Andrew Tate would be proud of us, even though hey. they're probably going to jail somewhere. <laughs> oh damn! No kidding. Yeah. All right. All right. Let's yeah. uh. Let's watch this uh, Bigfoot and then we'll end it up. Plenty to cut. Trending this morning, a video of what looks like Bigfoot walking around Southern Colorado. Take a look and see what you think. A couple shared this video on social media saying they spotted Bigfoot while riding the Durango and Silverton narrow gauge railroad train. They told Out There Colorado most people on the train didn't notice anything. It's like some random dude in a ghillie suit. Over the years, there have been more than 100 Bigfoot sightings. Because that's that's average South Colorado behavior, too. The fact that he saw them and he just like crouched down. He just sits down. Yeah, just sits down and looks at them. Yeah. The fact uh, that this got on a new show shows... I love the idea of Bigfoot in Colorado. Right. I mean, don't get me wrong. We got tons of forests and, like, nature for them to hide it, and sure. But, like, 
We ain't like we got we got spooky shit in our forest yeah. for sure. But I don't know about no Bigfoot. If there's a Bigfoot sighting in Colorado, it's just me like on a really long camping trip, That's just I going to out shave. to go pee. Yeah, just like look, it's it's a fucking Bigfoot, and it's just you just being like. <laughs> sitting by a river, like brushing my teeth. Yeah, yeah. It just it was a Bigfoot sighting, dude. That's fucking wild. <laughs> I swear to God, that was this man in a ghillie suit. Right. All right, guys. Well, thank you for coming back for another episode. Salud. Salud. Um, if you guys like Jared being on, we can make it more of a regular thing. Let us know in the comments. Be sure to also try out our Patreon. Big change. We are going from Patreon forward slash Padre. To just my name, Andres Belton. I'm creating a Patreon essentially for all of my content. So be sure to check it out. See if that's about you. And support this podcast and support everything I do by doing that. So we love you. Smash that sub button. Smash that like button. And talk to us in the comments about how much you love us. And how much you would hate to be a part of the wards and fucking the Civil War. Okay? Do it or now or else you're going to be hit by cannonball fire. Right? Seems, seems about accurate. <laughs> don't get drafted. All right, yeah, don't get drafted, just like the women are about to be. Anyways, love you guys. Bye. Thanks for having me. Bye. Bye.